Hey everyone, welcome to the first chapter of the next tutorial group, Theme Park Studio Advancement Series. These tutorials will cover the myriad of customization concepts and give you tricks on how to improve your workflow, and hopefully offer new perspectives about what you can really do in this program. Today we'll be covering advanced positioning, and what is that you might ask? Well you should already know that there are three position buttons on the top bar. Move which allows you to move the currently selected object around the world, rotate, which allows you to freely spin your selected object, and scale, which uniformly makes your selected object bigger or smaller. But add some hotkeys, and these three buttons have even more to offer. So I'll illustrate this point with a tree, in particular the Eucalyptus 2. So if I drop this tree down and look at it, it looks like the tree that everyone else has, which is good. And if I highlight it, put a bound box around it, and add selection lock for good measure, I can move it with the move tool just as you would expect. Shift plus the move tool lifts the tree, and Alt plus the move tool free rotates it. Now we've added an extra rotate function in the move tool for quicker workflow. If you add the seconds it takes to switch from move to rotate, to do something as simple as tweaking foliage, you'd see why it's installed in here. In the long run, it shaves minutes off your design time. Move is like your general positioning console. It's the thing you use 75% of the time. But that doesn't mean you should ignore the other buttons. Clicking rotate and adding these same hotkeys, this is where things get a little bit cooler. If I hit shift and drag this time, you see the entire tree is tilting. So rotate not only has a free rotate, but it also has two tilt options. Shift for one axis and Alt for the other. And then you can also free rotate this tilted tree if your angle was just a little bit off. And in essence, you've created a down tree, perfect for the aftermath of heavy rains or a giant windstorm. Timber! All right, enough of that. If you hit scale and add these hotkeys, again, cool things happen. If you just click and drag, the object scales uniformly as you might expect. But if you add shift, you can vertically scale it, you can squash it down, or you can stretch it up. If you press alt, you can scale it horizontally, or what I call smushing. You can squash, stretch, and smush, all proven technical terms. But the real takeaway is that you can combine these to create new shapes of trees. And when your library gets larger, you may not need to rely on this, but it's good to have in case you want the trees to be just a little bit taller or just a smidge skinnier. In the spirit of Theme Park Studio, the shapes that people create are no longer your prison. You have the power to form whatever you want. Advanced positioning will become very important in the next tutorial where I will show you two ways to use the Scenery Builder, another foundational tool for this title. Until then, happy building!